Welcome to the Wonderfest studio here in the Omega sector of the Milky Way galaxy. I am lucky today to be accompanied by Andy Fracknoy, the foremost public astronomer in the San Francisco Bay Area. Andy is the chair of the astronomy department at Foothill College, and he is also, among his many awards, the first recipient of Wonderfest's Carl Sagan Prize for science popularization. Welcome, Andy. Nice to be with you. Andy, you have told me that falling into a black hole is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I believe you, but why don't you first clue me in about what a black hole really is? Well, this is one of the, the fun things that astronomers have really uh, gone out on a limb uh, talking about in the last few decades. Uh, we thought at first that black holes were just theoretical oddities that were mainly fantasy uh, objects of uh, science nerds, but now a lot of astronomical work has gone into confirming the existence of these strange objects. So let me say a few words about what black holes are, and then we can talk about why you would not want to jump into one. So one of the uh, things that we know about all stars is that they die, and um, some stars, not very many, but the most massive stars, the stars that have the greatest amount of material, in a way the biggest stars, when they die, our theories predict that no force we know of in the universe can stop them from collapsing forever. That's quite a mouthful. What does it mean if a star, a dying star, can find no way to stop its eternal collapse? Well, it means that the star will just get more and more compressed. I like to use the word squozen. It'll get more and more squozen together. And as a result of that, gravity near the surface of the star will really go up. The more material you have in a smaller and smaller space, the stronger the gravity. So ultimately, as these stars get collapsider and collapsider, squozener and squozener, what happens is that it's harder and harder to get away from them. The gravity becomes really, really strong. Ultimately, they become so dense, so compressed, that nothing, not even light, the fastest thing in the universe, will have the power to get away. Everything will be trapped by the enormous gravity of these collapsing dead stars. Well, when it gets so strong a gravity that not even the speed of light is, is, is uh, fast enough to get away, then we won't be able to see it because light is how we see stars. So when we can no longer see the light because the light can't get away, it'll be a black colored object. And whenever we have uh, light not being able to get away, then nothing else, not a bunny, not a train, nothing can get away. So what do we call a place where things can fall in but they can't come back? We call them holes. And so as a result, astronomers have called these collapsed dead stars black holes. That's where the name came from. Please. This does sound like something I want to appreciate just from a distance. Exactly. But suppose my curiosity gets the better of me, and I wander a little too close. And in fact, I do start to fall in, say straight in. What is my fate? Well, this is not good news for those who know and love you, Tucker. Once you get near a black hole, gravity can play really strange tricks on your body. So think about right now, if you're standing up on Earth, your head feels slightly weaker gravity than your feet. It's not a big deal, but strictly speaking, your feet are a little closer to the center of gravity of the Earth, the center of the Earth itself. Your head is a little further away, and so there's a slightly greater pull of the Earth's gravity on your feet than on your head. But we have strong bodies. We ate our Wheaties this morning. We do fine with that difference with the gravity of the Earth. But when you're experiencing the outrageous gravity of a black hole, then the difference between the pull on your head and the pull on your feet becomes a serious, serious problem. If you're falling feet first into a black hole, 
the pull of the black hole's incredible gravity on your feet will be a lot more than the pull of the gravity of the black hole on your head. And so your feet will try to rush into the black hole faster. And your, your head, although also rushing into the black hole, will fall in a little slower. So with your foot rushing so much faster, your body will try to stretch. But as you know, we're not that stretchable a species. So if your body tries to stretch, your foot will soon snap out of your ankle, your ankle out of your lower leg, your lower leg out of your knee, your knee out of your upper thigh, your thigh out of your uh, main trunk, and pretty soon there'll be individual body parts snapped apart, falling toward the black hole. As we get closer, the intense difference in gravity will start to rip even those body parts apart so that your nails will come out of your toes, your toes out of your feet, and pretty soon they'll just be individual molecules and atoms, one by one, falling to their doom in the black hole. This sounds like the gravitational inquisition, the rack. I'm on the rack, on my way down, ultimately to land in the black hole, but that's, in pieces. That's right. That's correct. And uh, astronomers have given this a highly technical name. We call this spaghettification, where you get stretched like a great noodle of spaghetti and then eventually snap. Once you get into the black hole, you will, of course, disappear because nothing can be seen from a black hole. A black hole is a place where nothing gets out. So your individual atoms would then fall into the black hole and no news of you would ever get back to worried relatives on Earth. Better that they not know what happened to me. Exactly. A black hole, as, as, as we said, is a once in a lifetime experience if you're falling in. Now, we love studying black holes, as you said, from a distance because they are fascinating objects where we can understand some of the most bizarre aspects of gravity that Einstein predicted. They're the endpoints of the life of a massive star. Uh, black holes can gather more stuff and grow, so they're like cosmic uh, garbage dumps where more and more material can be uh, put in. So there are many astronomical reasons for studying black holes from afar. But as a personal visit, as a honeymoon trip, I really don't recommend a voyage to a black hole. Thank you, Andy.